Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Explore, we're going to take a look at how to do custom libraries like Zim Socket and Zim Game and uh, Pizzazz, etc. So you can use a library of your own things that you might want to use with Zim. So let's go to the Zim site and take a look. Ooh, how exciting. So we go to the code section, and in the code section under tools, there's a new entry called custom library uh, next to the model view controller and the node package manager, custom library. We press it, and that's where you can grab the zip file. So we're going to go through this zip file and we can make a library similar to Zim Game, Physics, Pizzazz, etc. And you can choose between ES5 code or ES6 code. There's a README that we'll take a look at. And we can include Zim Duo, which lets you accept parameters in a regular way or as a configuration object. Um, that's with all of the libraries. So you're going to see that there's four different versions of the library, um, ES5 and ES6 uh, account for those, but there's also a full version of the library. The full version of the library comes with ZimV and ZimOct. That's for dynamic parameters, um, where you can uh, let the, the class pick from what you're passing in, and a ZimV value. That's very handy. For instance, if you wanted to have an emitter and uh, have it emit circles and rectangles, you could pass in an array with a circle and a rectangle, and it would pick from those. So uh, we found that very handy. And uh, one of the template examples shows you how to make a class that handles ZimV values, as well as ZimOct, ZimOct for style. So these two things are added in the full version of the templates, and Zim Duo is available with all of them. And there's the link to the Explorer that we're doing now. Okay, let's go in and take a look at some code then. Close that down. This is the, what's in the zip file called library, and there's a readme file. There's an app folder, and in the app folder are five, or four index pages to the ES5, ES6, the ES5 full, and the ES6 full. And each of those calls its own library, ES5, ES6, uh, full ES5, and full ES6. All right, they're all along the top here. So the readme is basically saying that and what we were talking about um, earlier. So there's the readme. It also goes in to sort of say when you might want to use ES5, when you might want to use ES6. Um, some devices that support the canvas do not support yet ES6, or won't support it. <laughs> you know, we're talking whatever iPod touches sixes and stuff like that. Um, but uh, still, uh, the Zim would run on that, um, and so it would be too bad. You might want to then transpile using Babel, for instance, your code. So if you use ES6, you might consider to transpile. Zim itself is written in ES5, so we don't have to worry about that, and you're welcome to use ES5 here. Um, there's hardly any difference. We did a little calculation on the class that we were looking at, and it was 3 0.5% less code to go to ES6 with their class keyword. And most of that was in just a getter setter <laughs> method, I think. The ES6 getter setter is very easy. The ES5 getter setter is a little bit verbose, we'll call it. But hey, um, whatever. You, you can choose to use what you want there. All right. So let's go in and take a look at the ES5 HTML page. That's calling our library out here in the libraries uh, called ES5. Um, your library name, it could just be your name, for instance, if it's a bunch of code that you do. 
it might be if you make a lot of charts or something you could make a library called charts and then in there have pie graphs and whatever um, usually a library has a theme of some sort like the game module a, a module or a library are very similar uh, if not the same um, we call the game module a library we don't call Zim a library. It used to be a library, but we now call it a framework, uh, which is a little bit bigger and all-encompassing. Libraries are usually some code that help you do something, whereas a framework, that's where you just do that stuff <laughs> in the framework. <laughs> um, it sort of surrounds what you're doing. So have fun with that. It may be that you want to share your library. And the idea behind a library is that you would use it across multiple applications. So this is not just an application file that uh, you're using for your app. It would be um, probably something that you might use across multiple applications. That's why we didn't put the library, all these libraries here, we didn't put the libraries in the app folder. Uh, is because they're they're back from the app folder. So we might have a number of app folders. All these folders use Zim, for instance. So we don't put Zim in each one. That would duplicate it. And same with your libraries. You, you bring them outside your projects, and hopefully you can use them across your projects. However, this code that we're going to see, the ES5 module a pattern, the module pattern that we use, we also use in things like Model View Controller and in an app file like a remote JavaScript app file. Uh, we use the module pattern there too quite often. Um, so anyway, let's go and take a look. So uh, what we've done as well is we've um, suggested that you have a description of your module up here, like what's it for, and maybe put in some docs. So here's what the Zim docs usually look like. We have the class, so we're making a house class. And here are the parameters for that, <laughs> except they're wrong. <laughs> we changed from a width and height to a size. Oh, dear. Oh, well, we'll, up <laughs> we'll update that zip file any minute. There's going to be in all of them. Um, yeah, so anyway, there's the parameters. And then we've got a description of what the fact that it's a Zim class that extends a container, which and that itself extends a CreateJS container. We have a description of the class, a little note, an example area, the parameters. And we've said that these parameters support Zim Duo. So that means you can go directly to a top color, like squiggly brackets, top color, colon, blue, or something, if you so desired. Or you can pass in null, null, blue. Or if it's ES6, this is ES5 that we're looking at, you would have to pass in undefined, undefined, blue. Pain in the bloody neck! Um, but anyway, uh, <laughs> there we go. For, for Zim stuff, uh, Zim's all ES5, you're welcome to use null, null, null anytime you want. Uh, although you might want to start getting used to using undefined, undefined, undefined. It's just twice as long to type, that's all. Um, but like I said, we also support the Zim Duo in this case, so less nulls and undefines around. Here are the methods. <laughs> That's totally not supposed to be there either. I'm glad we're proofreading this. I copied this from um, a recent module that we did on the webcam thing, and that, that little note was about that. And so are these things. What the heck? Those aren't the methods. What methods have we got? Uh, type, bottom, okay, those ones are right, at least, but we didn't update the methods. It has a dispose. It has... Do we do it in the ES6? Let's just see if... In the ES, uh, that's the ES6 HTML, ES6 description, class, cons, params, methods. <laughs> <We didn't. laughs> okay, we'll fix that up too. Uh, but you would put in, uh, really, this was just uh, showing you an example of some docs if you, if you wanted to do that uh, in the same format as the Zim docs. I can't remember our methods. I think it was fall. Wait a minute. It is fall. Okay, these are right. Uh, yeah, my apologies. There. The house has a fall method. <laughs> okay, so not too bad. Um, and the direction it's going to fall. And it has a dispose. There's also a clone. 
could have put the clone in there probably, although all display objects, well, all display objects also have a, um, a dispose. But a clone is, makes a copy of the object. Good enough. Zim fourth methods. So if we extend a container, that means we get all of these methods because they come with the container. And properties, here are the properties that we're defining on our house, as well as um, all of the container properties and CreateJS properties in general, such as X and Y. This dispatches an events. So here's uh, an example of, uh, we'll, we'll be able to see how an event is done to say that the house has fallen. <laughs> it's finished falling. And there's other events that come with CreateJS. Okay, so here's the ES5 module pattern, and all of the files use the ES5 module pattern. The reason for that is described in the README, but it's generally um, because uh, for an ES6 import and export, if we exported and then imported into our app file, we have to either use the namespace and so that we could import all of the things, or we have to use a um, specific, we have to specify which classes or functions or whatever on, on the module that we want to use. And in for Zim, for a framework, that's really not necessary. We don't want everybody to have to use the namespace, such as uh, kids. And we don't uh, definitely don't want to have people say, oh, okay, we have to import now a circle, and oh, now we have to import Rand, and now we have to import blue, zim.blue. Uh, you know, it would be this, every time we want to use something, we'd have to go up and remember to import that name. So that's also ridiculous. That would allow us not to use the namespace. <laughs> but it's not all that practical as far as we're concerned. So we don't use ES6 modules. Uh, we'd also have to, have to transpile it, but okay. So uh, here's the ES5 module pattern and it's as easy as this. So we're calling this thing called Zim. We're assigning to this variable Zim uh, this whole big uh, function here. And, just goes all the way down to here. This function returns Zim. Uh, it's a little bit of a weird thing. Like we collect Zim and it returns Zim. And, and then we're also passing into the function. It's a self-calling um, self function. We're passing in Zim if it exists already or a new object. And basically what that means is if Zim already exists as an object, then everything that we put on Zim in here, such as the house, this house is being put on the Zim object, that means it will be added to the rest of the Zim objects. If Zim doesn't exist, it will make a new object for it and add the house to it. And then the next thing that loads will have. You're supposed to load this uh, after Zim, but that's the idea behind the ES5 module pattern. It's a beautiful piece of code. It's really just that right there. And these two lines right there. And that's it. So that's as easy as an export and an import as far as I'm concerned. It's, it's a little twisty looking, but it's, it's quite simple. And then what we do is we just store everything that we want available on Zim like that. So that gets us set up with this Zim namespace. But if we don't want to use the Zim namespace, then at the end, we will take anything that's stored on Zim, uh, such as Zim house, and make a global variable for it. We have this thing. We, we don't make a list of this for everything that's in Zim. Uh, it would be a long, you know, big, long list, and we'd always have to update it anytime we wanted to add something new. But basically, we loop through Zim, figure out what's on it, and store a global variable based on that. That's called Zimplify inside of Zim. You can take a look at that. Zimplify does a few other things like that, but basically what it's doing is it's taking the namespace and making it globally available. Uh, so we don't have to use the namespace. And that's if ZNS is 
this is if it's not true. So ZNS stands for Zim namespace. So if you put ZNS equals true in a script before you import Zim, then you have to use the namespace. If you don't have that there, then it defaults to not having to use the namespace. Anyway, what this allows, uh, this thing right here, is uh, back in our ES5 thing here, we make a new frame. That type of thing is uh, why frame works instead of zim.frame. But that also allows us to say new house, yay, instead of new zim.house. So if you didn't do this, and that commented out, you would have to say zim.house to access boop, 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 that right there on zim. But because we've just taken that and made it global, house is equal to zim.house, then that means we can use house, so a new house. All right, so we're in uh, a zim example here. We're making a new house. This can be ES6, like even though the even though the class is made in ES5 to use the class, we're here storing it in a const. What else are we doing that's ES5? We have an arrow, or sorry, ES6. We have an arrow function. We have cons and lets all over. There's an arrow function. Okay, so we're coding here in our app in ES6, and we can decide to transpile that later if we need to or, or not with something like Babel. For instance, all our CodePen examples, they're all transpiled automatically by CodePen using Babel, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, but many of our examples are ES6, and we don't really care. You know, there's hardly anybody using old, old things anyway. But if you want to get full reach out of it, you might consider transpiling, especially if you're working with maybe schools that have old computers or something like that. You may want to consider either using ES5 in here, so just use VARs, etc. And Instead of arrow functions, go back to an anonymous function or a function literal. Yeah, it's not, <laughs> it's not really that different. Um, okay, so we've made a house. Oh, you haven't even seen the example. Oh, do you want to see the example? Okay, let's open that up in Browser Plus. Silly me. Hey, it's a house, and it falls. And then it says, oh, too bad. Then it loads the house again, a new house. And it falls, boing, 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 too bad. Oh, it's a house and it falls. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> okay, so that's what we're doing. We're starting off with an alpha of the house. So just even having alpha, center, and animate, those are all zim forth. So if your house did not extend a container, you would not be able to do these things or extend something that extends a container. For instance, a button, we could extend a button. Um, because the button extends a container and it has all of these zim forth methods. Okay, so just make sure you do that. We're going to take a look at how that's done in just a sec. So we're animating, we're setting uh, a property. So there's us testing a property, and here we are s testing a what? A method, I guess, house.fall. So that's our custom method on the house, fall. And then down here we have an event, the fallen event. So we're capturing the fact that it's finished falling and showing the pane. When we close, we just reload the page. So that's what's in our, our uh, each of these things pretty well. Basically the same thing. Oh, the full ones, we practice a little bit of applying style and using the Zim V values for dynamic parameters. So it's a little bit different. Okay, let's go into the ES5 library. We've uh, done a little bit of an overview here, but let's go and take a look at... <laughs> Hello, what happened to my ES5? Uh, it's scrolled over somewhere strange, it seems. ES5. JS. Okay, and seven. Yeah, we've got it back. Sorry, I just closed uh, something over on the right of Adam and we got a bit of a glitch. And Adam boo boo wasn't my fault. All right, so here's our house. It's a function in ES5. A class is a function. We're storing it on the Zim, so you would make yours just like that. And then if we want duo to work, 
then we add this bit of code here. Note that Zim House matches this Zim House. If you're minifying this code, then you need to choose this example right here. So if you happen to be minifying your your library, this, it, libraries are usually a little bit shorter and we don't bother minifying it. The whole framework is really big and of course we're going to minify that. So in our case, we had to make sure that we took the same thing that's here. As a matter of fact, I meant to just do that exactly the same so that you know you you can have spaces if you want. So we just take that exact same thing and pass it in as a signature. The problem is, is what uh, Zim Duo does is if you receive normal parameters, all is good. It just goes through and carries on with the class. But if Zim, if this thing called Zob object, it's it's searching for an object. So if you passed in an, a single object literal instead, then that's the Zim Duo technique. Uh, or, well, sorry, that's, the, I guess, the configuration object of the Zim Duo technique. At that point, um, it needs to know how to recreate, like you've given it names, you might go directly to the top color. It needs to then match the fact that you've told it top color needs to be the third parameter. And it, it then sorts out the parameters, it matches those names of the parameters, and recalls the function believe it or not. So it just, it just gets to here and says, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not even going to make anything for you. I'm not going to make an object for you because I noticed that you've passed in uh, an object with, you know, the parameters in the object. So it actually recalls the house. Well, if you minify the code, then these words get minified. They minify the parameter uh, names. So uh, we're out of luck. You've passed in top color, but this might be the letter C or something like that. <laughs> you know, it's some, some random, random little minified thing. So oh, it's like, oh, no. So basically what we do is if you are going to minify, you, if you pass in the signature, then it's this, this will not be minified because it's a string. It just stays like that. And we know that top color is going to be the third thing. So that's how we dealt with that. You pass in a sig. Anyway, usually we don't minify our libraries, which means you would be fine just using this single line where we don't pass in a signature. Oh, by the way, for ES6 as well, to make ES6 work, we have to pass in a signature. Um, just in the way that the parameters work in ES6, or it's actually the class. We can't recall the class. So we have to fiddle with it in a different way, <laughs> which was a pain in the neck, but we figured it out. Uh, Zob is extremely complicated, by the way. It's not very big. It's maybe five lines, but the lines all have you know a lot of stuff in them, and it's really, really tricky code, but it's worked wonders. It's uh, just been absolutely fantastic for us over the, the seven years or eight years that we've been doing Zim. Really, we couldn't do Zim the way we do it uh, without that functionality of the Zim Duo technique. Very, very convenient. Uh, that, by the way, Zob is made open source. It's in GitHub. You know, nobody really is grabbing it, but uh, you can use Zob in your own functions or other classes or libraries. Um, and here you are using it here. And it's much the same way. You just throw that at the beginning of your function and you can do that too. It's like, wow, cool. All right. Um, here we are checking our parameters. This is ES5. So we're checking to see if there was nothing passed in Then we're giving default parameters. In ES6, we can give default parameters right up inside of here until we want to work with style, in which case we have to, we can't use default parameters up top here. And we'll see that in the ES6 full example there as to how we're dealing with that style. So we have some default values. We're calculating a width and a height from the size. The thing is like, um, nobody really knows what the height of that house is going to be because it's, it's got a triangle and this is the equation for that. So we don't want to have, we don't want to make the people put in a height of the house and we didn't want to have them put in the height and then calculate the triangle. So basically we said, oh, just choose a size and that's basic, your base size. It is the width. I suppose. And then we're calculating the height of the triangle so that we can make uh, call the container constructor. 
So each class, if we extend a container, we're going to have to call the super constructor, the um, containers constructor, before we do anything serious in our in our app, before we have this, I think. Um, so that's a create jest requirement, and that's fine, whatever. Here's how we handle extending right down here. So after we make the class, we say zim extend. So this is, we could do that without the zim namespace like that. As a matter of fact, I maybe should bring that to our attention. Everything in here, we're using the zim namespace. Uh, well, zim house we have to do because we're stored on there. But um, for instance, the colors, where's the color? Do we have some default? Zim.tin, not tin because that would assume that uh, we may be using this module. I don't know if you are, uh, but you may be using this module with the Zim namespace. And if that's the case, everything in this module needs to have the Zim namespace, like a Zim rectangle. So if we make a new rectangle, it's got to be a new Zim rectangle. This makes sure that our, our module here, our, our library, will work with uh, your app code if you have chosen to use the Zim namespace. <laughs> um, so we have to be careful of that. We have to quite be careful of that. We're so used to not using the namespace when we go to code in Zim, like Zim is huge. When we go to code something in Zim, we have to remember everything we make. Like if we make a rectangle, it's got to be a Zim rectangle. Uh, otherwise, it might not work if, um, if the module is being required. Alrighty, so... Uh, down at the bottom here, boop, 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 we're using zim extend, and we're saying please extend house. It's a container, so extend container, I guess, to make a house. And these are the ones that we're going to override. So we're overriding a dispose right here, and the reason for that is we might want to remove custom things in our dispose. Like if we make event listeners on our class so that it can dispatch events, then um, we might want to dispose those. Actually, I guess if, if we use events, it has nothing to do with the dispose or the um, dispatching of the stuff that, that doesn't need to be disposed. <laughs> but if we use events, say like a, a keyboard event in here or something, uh, when we dispose our object, we need to also remove that custom keyboard event. So we may have things in here, and then we want to call just the containers dispose. See what I mean? So the, the rest of it is just disposing a container. We can do that just like uh, by calling the containers dispose. So here we are doing that, and we're calling dispose on the zim container underscore, uh, well, on zim container, and basically on that. So whatever we pass in here is the identification of the super constructor, or sorry, not the constructor, the super class, all right, including the um, constructor. So the constructor is up here, doop, 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 right there. So zim container underscore constructor. So when we want to call that, that um, container that we're extending, this is how we do it. This dot zim container, that's the ID we've given, call the constructor and pass it the width and the height. So we wanted to make a container that is the width and height of the house. So we figured out the house based on, that's the, uh, uh, um, an equilateral triangle formula <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> you may or may not have to do that, uh, but it's handy sometimes when you call that constructor to know the width and height of the container. Often we do. Uh, like for a button, we would pass in the width and height. You almost look at any Zim component, the first two parameters are the width and the height so that we can make a container that has that width and height. So it keeps things simple. All right, um, we've got a type called house. We do this with all of our Zim classes, this dot type, and then this is the name of the class. And that means we can ask any of the Zim class, hey, button, my button, uh, what is your dot type? And it would say button, capital letters. Okay, so we'll just continue doing that here. Um, if you are in a, a, a private function, as in if we had something like function test here, 
and we go uh, this dot what are we dealing with um, zog for instance this dot type it would not zog house because this inside of the function refers to the function so uh, that leads us <laughs> to that <laughs> so what we do is we make a variable called that and it's equal to this. And if we use that here, oh, if we spell it right, if we use that inside of this function, then that refers to the this, and therefore it will say house. Okay. So that's fairly, <laughs> that, that <laughs> is fairly common and, you know, a well-known sort of gotcha uh, for ES5 coding. Still happens with ES6, but a little bit less because let scopes to the um, scopes to the function and arrow functions scope to the class, and so there's less less of that happening these days in ES6. It still does happen, but we can get away with it uh, more easily. But anyway, so we we have a tradition anyway in Zim and others have that as well of storing this on that, and then inside of functions like this we can use that all right um, we don't need to do that inside a function if we're assigning the function to something that's stored on this because then the scope of this inside of here is uh, the the object the, the class object okay and not the function however just to be consistent for the most part in Zim and in most of the cases, we use that in here anyway, because we already got that. Let's just use that, that all the time. Then we don't have to think about it because otherwise here, if we said this, because, you know, we're inside of a, the scope of this um, method. So this is a method stored on this. Therefore, the scope of it is of this is the object, not the function. That's fine. But this one isn't. If we put this here, this is another function, and the scope of this is this anonymous function, not the class. See what I mean? So we'd have to, we could say, all right, we can get away with this here, but here we'd have to say that. So what we usually do is just use that, all right? And we could even use it here if we wanted to. We could, once we assign this to that, we never have to use this again. We could just use that everywhere. By convention, though, it just seems a little strange to do it like that. So I um, usually put this here. However, inside here, I'm going to usually use that for ES5. Okay, that could be confusing for you. Hopefully it's all right, though. <laughs> Hopefully I explained it right. Uh, now what we've got going on here is we're making, we're actually making our house. Yay, finally, we're using the new Zim rectangle. Remember to use Zim. We're passing in the size and the bottom color. Uh, and we're positioning it at 0, 0 at the left and at the bottom of this. This is our container. So this is the container. Anything that you want to put in that now, you would add it to this. This represents the object that is made when you make a new blah, 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 blah. So right here, new house. This is the new house. Okay, we made a new house. And you can see that we're centering that on the stage. So this is the container that we're centering it on the stage. It's a container, yes, but now it's a container that has something added to it. It's got this rectangle added to that container. So that's how it's done. Custom class that extends a container. We just add things to the container. And then when we make a new, whatever that custom class is, all that stuff's in the container and we can put it on the stage. All right, cool. We also are referencing it as a property. So this dot bottom is how we access it from the outside. And this dot top is how we access the triangle from the outside. So when the house gets made, uh, this is accessing a property, but we could say something like house dot bottom dot we could set the color there, uh, but we could scale, we could ska 0.5 comma 1. So this is scaling the width half 
and leaving the height the same. And watch what happens as we scale the bottom of our house. Ready? Open in Browser Plus. Oopsies. <laughs> there it is. Our, our house has been scaled. Okay, so that's how we can access the things that are in there. And we put up here, boop, 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 put up here in the documentation. Ah, oh, did it again. Son of a gun. What's going on, man? Adam has a little bug. So I'm closing the right-hand panel, and all of a sudden my code disappears. <laughs> Pwah is what I say to that, and I want this one right here. All right, so ES5 um, up here, I was just saying that there's the methods of our house and here's the properties. So it has a type. That type is available on this. Remember, that's going to say house. It's got a bottom and a top. These are references to the rectangle. So we say, hey, those things are available as properties. So are the colors. So if we wanted to, we could have just said, here's the bottom and the top. If you want to change the color of the bottom, you would have to go my house dot bottom dot color is equal to red. Well, what we decided to do is make that a little bit easier. We provided the bottom color. Bottom color, by the way, is the name of the parameter. Bottom color, top color. Um, we provided those as getter setter uh, properties or methods. And we'll see that in just a sec. Where will we see that down below? So... Uh, in this case, what we've done, note, note the format here, this dot bottom just takes that and makes it available on the outside. If we didn't do that, then its bottom is what's called a, a private property. Its bottom's only accessible inside here. It can't be accessed from outside. So by putting bottom on this, we're making it available outside, and that's called a public property. So this is how we do a public property, and here's a private property. ES6, it's messed up. We can have private properties, but in ES6, you're going to see, here's ES6, and ES6, this function fall is not in the constructor. So here's the constructor right here. See that? Bracket, uh, bracket. That's the constructor, and it goes to here. Fall, the method, is not in the constructor. That means anything that we make private here, like bottom uh, or what, or, or these, these parameters that are coming in here. So here's some parameters coming in. These parameters are only available inside the constructor. We can't access them from this method. <laughs> so the only solution that we have, well, there's another weird solution, but uh, the really the most practical solution, I guess, is if you wanted to access a private variable in the in the method, uh, you would have to assign it to the, the, the object, at which point it's not private anymore. It's public. That means from the outside, they can they can access that and change it, stuff like that. But that's the only way that we can access this inside of here. So I don't like ES6 classes because of that. Yes, there's all this stuff is a little easier. Class extends. So here we've got the Zim house is a class that extends a Zim container. So what we just did there is what we've got down here. However, we didn't mention anything about how what we're overriding. We didn't have to do that thing. We didn't have to do this, which looks on the prototype, but you know, it's explained here, but it's not that important, really. So we're, this is how we're saying the house extends a container, basically. As a matter of fact, you don't even need any of that. You can just use super from... Uh, well, if you don't provide that, uh, you just use what uh, a super, quote super, and it would become super underscore constructor rather than zim container underscore constructor. So really, uh, you, you can extend just like that. And so there it is one way. Here it is the other way. You know, it's not all that different, really. <laughs> zim house extends a container. House extends a container. Okay. 
um, ES5, you've got the, the way you do the class is you put the function with the parameters right there. And everything inside here is in the class. With ES6, you have a constructor. So you, you have no parameters up here. And you have to put the parameters in the constructor and you got stuff in the constructor. But then you put stuff outside. In ES5, if you wanted to put stuff outside, you would store it on the prototype of the class. And so that's basically what, what they're doing is they just said, okay, we're going to take we're, we're going to give you this format here where you've got a constructor, where you've got a class. They gave us that format, but really in behind they're probably just translating it directly back into a function and the on the prototype. I mean that's that's what I would do. It would have taken me, oh, I don't know, an hour, maybe not even that much, to arrange this structure. <laughs> You know, and just say, okay, well, we've got, you know, a function and a prototype. All, all we have to do is just, you know, arrange a few words differently. And basically, we'll translate this into a function and a prototype in behind. Nobody will know. And we've given you the class keyword. We've given you the extend keyword. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so basically, ES6, these things are just like they're on the prototype. And when they're on the prototype, they have the same problem, which is why all of Zim, we don't code anything on the prototype. It's just we didn't bother because we don't have private variables then. So anyway, uh, blah, bitty, blah, bitty, blah. Why don't we get back to the point here? Hopefully that's okay. We are in a Zim Explorer. How are you guys doing? Let me prove it to you. Oh, yeah. Remember this? We are in a Zim Explorer, so it's kind of nice to do a little bit of Explorer through here, isn't it? However, you might be wanting to get to the point, so let's carry on. Where did we get to? Right, we were talking about storing this dot bottom as a property, great, but we also have a local variable that we can use. It's just a little bit easier than saying this, 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 this everywhere. If, if we had more stuff, we don't have all that much stuff in here, but there we are referring to the bottom. If we didn't have our local variable called bottom, like we could have done this. And then down here, we would have had to say this dot bottom everywhere. And you see people do that. And it's just really annoying, I find. And this would be this dot top. See what I mean? You'd have this in front of everything. And I would prefer not to do that. So what I do is uh, something like this. Basically, I always use private properties or private variables like this. I assign it to something. And then if I find I need to, or people will need to access that outside, if we need to make it public, I just toss that in between. It's easy. Then everything else here is just local, 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 local. We don't have to say this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. All right. And it's good practice too, because what you do is you say, okay, don't do that. And you keep on everything local. And then you realize, okay, what properties do I want to give the people? I want to give them access to this rectangle. So you say, okay, this dot bottom is equal to, you just pop that in there. And that way it, it helps with encapsulation, it's called. Encapsulation is the black box of, uh, you know, object-oriented programming. You want everything to work inside. You don't want to open up the parts to the outside. But sometimes you need to let people do things or access things, and you have to decide as a coder. So yes, I want them to access the rectangle. You know, maybe not. I, I, if you don't, they can't do things like what we just did with the scale. Um, you would have to give them certain, you know, either uh, methods or properties to access things inside, like we've given it a color property, for instance. But that probably wouldn't have been enough. What if what if they wanted to do something else with rectangle or find out if something hits the rectangle inside? If we don't if we don't let them from the outside gain access to the rectangle, they wouldn't be able to do that. So we're sort of like, okay, we'll give them access to the rectangle and we'll give them access to the triangle. This dot top trump top is equal to. There we go. Here's a method. The method is stored on this. That's why it's a method. So it's basically a function. What a method is, is a function stored on an object. 
what a property is, is it's a variable, a variable that is stored on the object. Okay, so here's a function that's stored on an object. Uh, we're using that inside just for consistency and we're setting a registration point of, oh, um, when this falls, so this is the stuff we're gonna do when it falls, we're adjusting the registration point to the bottom left-hand corner and then we're animating the skew of it. And depending on the direction, either minus 90 or 90, depending on the direction. We have a bounce and we're calling. Here we are dispatching. So this is how you dispatch an event. It's really easy. The object, that, dot dispatch, and you say what it is. There is a fancier way of making a new event, make a new CreateJS event here, store on that new CreateJS event uh, custom properties of your own, such as mouse X or something like that, and then passing um, the CreateJS event object it would look like this. Uh, var E is equal to new, mm, yeah, I think it's a new create js dot event and in here is fallen like so and then you say something like e dot mouse x is equal to 20 or something like that and then you would pass in e so that dispatches this event it will be a fallen event still but it will have an own custom property uh, it's kind of like e dot target you know, when, when, when we receive that, you know, if, you, if we receive an event, usually we call it the event object E, and we would have e.target. If it's a key event, we would have e.keycode. That's how that's done here is e.mousex. Usually don't bother. We dispatch the fallen event. If we want it to know anything about the house, then we uh, just ask for the property on the house. Undo, 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 or delete. So that's how we're dispatching an event when the animation is done. And we're returning that. That's how we chain. Oh, I should have said, hey, here's how we chain too. As long as fall, so this function returns the event or the object that, or it would work with this as well. But like I said, we usually, inside of anything, we just keep on using that because otherwise we get this disparency where this one needs to be that, this one doesn't have to be. So we just put it all as that. Okay, returning that will work as chaining. So then we could do something like back here. That's how chaining works. There's a new house. Uh, when it falls, we could also do something like dot dispose. Oh, that wouldn't be very good because it would end up disposing it before it actually animated and, and fell. But that's what we mean, like fall, then we could change something else on if we wanted to. How about a move? Let's move it um, 200. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to look at it in a browser this time rather than my browser plus. Uh oh, have we made a boo-boo? F12. Sim under constructors or constructor is not on 98. So we did something to it on uh, line 98 of our ES5 library. 98. It doesn't know that. Why not? <laughs> Crap. Uh, I think we brought it back. Remember, we got rid of that. Uh, if you don't have that, then um, you would have to in here, and it would still all work, but in here it would be something like, I think it's just super, like that. We use a super keyword by default. However, uh, the reason why we do it this way is that if you had a custom class and then extended that custom class again, you have more than one super and it gets mixed up. So it's all right to use super, but only use super once. And so because we extend like a button extends a container, which extends create, which extends a create JS container, we have worked out a system where we give each of these things its own unique name. 
So uh, that's why we call that one zim container. And that's why we pass it in here. Ha! And now this should work, hopefully. There's the house. And look at that. Did you see what happened there? We've chained on a move. So that shifts over. By the way, it falls randomly either way. So once again, back in here, we told it to fall. And there's the move. If we didn't, back in here, if we didn't uh, bup, 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 return that, let's try it. So I comment that out. Refresh here. There it is. Uncut error cannot read properties uh, reading of undefined reading move. So the problem is uh, here we've put the move method on fall, but fall didn't return the object. It, so fall is null. So basically this is undefined or null or whatever that returns. And dot move is not going to work. So that is how you make chaining work in, in your methods. All right, going down here, are the getter setter methods. So these, this is the format for a getter setter. Uh, we're going to just find out whatever. So this is the bottom color. If we ask, if we try and get the bottom color, then we're going to return the bottom, which is the rectangles color. If we try and set the bottom color, we receive this value and we say bottom color is equal to that value. So that's pretty simple. So it's just sort of like a flow through. Uh, otherwise, from the outside, we would have to say house dot bottom dot color equals. So here we have an example of we're testing that house dot bottom color equals. Uh, we could, if we wanted to, we could say house dot bottom dot color equals blue. That would also work. Why don't we make it um, pink? Ready? Refresh. There it is. Uh, we still have the move in there as well. Fall and take off the move. So do you see what I mean? And that's just one more removed, at which point, if, if we did that, uh, back in the, the docs here, we would have to take out these two properties. And you'd look at it and go, these are the only properties we have. We can access the bottom and the top. Because it's a rectangle, we, we should know that, okay, if we access the bottom, we could change its color. And maybe that would be fine. All right. If that were the case, if we didn't have bottom and top there, basically we remove these getter setter methods. Bump. We don't need them. Okay, so what we've done is we've shown you how to do a getter setter method in here that uh, prevents a, or that allows us to <laughs> get in trouble here. Return that for chaining. Okay, we want that there. Um, now we can access in here. Doot, 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 doot. We don't have to do a three dotted there, well, two dots or whatever. We can say house dot bottom color equals pink. Okay, what did I have before? Blue. We go back here, we refresh. There it is, blue. If we didn't do that, by the way, then it will be the default color, which was gray. By the way, it's falling in different directions. We've run this. This is a new method in in Zim. Oh, gosh, that means this example. Darn it. Oh, it's using 00. zero. Did we tuck it in 00? Zero, zero? We must have. Yeah, I guess we did. Yeah, we did. We tucked it in 00. zero. Uh, odds, it is. We'll announce it in Zim NFT 01. But uh, that would be like saying rand, round brackets, uh, greater than 0.5. So... If you roll a random number between zero and one, half the time we're going left or right. So this is the ternary operator here. If that's true, it does what's after the question mark, else it does what's after the colon. So we're passing 
either left or right into fall. Well, this is easy enough, but we've made a new one called odds 50%. Don't forget like we did, odds 0.5, thinking that was half and it was just never working. And what that, what that means is 0.5% of the time go left, <laughs> otherwise go right. <laughs> So we want, it's percentage, we want 50%. So this is half the time go left, half the time go right. Okay, that's, I think, a little bit easier to read. We just have to, we've been using random numbers for so long. The random is between 0 and 1, so half the time is 0.5. So I just have to remember to use percent. Uh, that one caught me. I was going, oh, it's broken. What's going on? I had to, like, figure it out finally. Anyway, that's why the house is going back and forth. Uh, we talked about the default color of gray. We have, uh, we're accessing a property. Here's the event, house.onfallen. Great. And this is what we're doing. We're showing a pane. And when we close the pane, we're uh, going. So imagine that we had moved the pane into um, the class. So if in the class here, Where's Fallen? There's Fallen. Instead of dispatching, we actually made the pane here and the event. Let's do that. I think it'll work. So copy that, and I'm not even going to bother accessing the event there. Just come in here and comment this out. Go like that. Okay, so when it finishes falling, We've built this right into the class. It's going to do this stuff. Let's see if it works. So we refresh here. Did I save everything? Yeah, everything saved. Too bad. Hey, too bad popped up. You go like that. Yeah, it works. Okay. So this too bad is coming right here in the class. It's being uh, made there. And then after our getter setters, we've got a clone, which we'll talk about in a sec, but here's the dispose. So here's where we would need to get rid of this close method, because otherwise it hangs around and pain will not be garbage collected, because we've still got this event sitting here. Um, so even if we remove the rec, uh, when we dispose the container, by the way, uh, this part right here, when it disposes the container, it will go through and it will remove the rectangle. It will remove the triangle. It will remove any events that are on the container, uh, but it will not know or it will not be able to remove this event because it, it can't come in here and figure out what's happening. So basically, this guy right here, this dispose on the outside, our dispose needs to do that. The container's dispose won't do it. So uh, what that would mean is we would have to gain access to this event right here, pane.onclose. So we would store that outside. We would do something like uh, var event. I'll call it something else. Um, close event. We'll just store it there, or declare it there, I mean. And then here we say close event is equal to pane.onclose. All right, that gives us access to this event. And then what we do is something a little tricky. We copy just the first bit of it there. So when we dispose, because it's declared here outside of the fall, that means we'll gain access to it. That's scope, JavaScript scope. It's declared there, so therefore everywhere inside of this whole class will have access to it. And if we go down into the dispose, we can say this, pane. We also have access to, oh, we don't have access to pane. We're going to fix that. And this becomes off. So we say pane.off. To turn off any close events. Close events uh, This that call this event function. So it's kind of like that's the idea of the event. This is the type of the event. You need all this. That's how you turn it off instead of on, on the pane. This removes the, um, the close event. 
Uh, however, we might want to say if close event. I'll tell you why in just a sec. So if we come back up here, uh, we may never have called the fall, at which point there would be no close event because we never called the fall. I don't think it would give us an error. Maybe it would because we would be trying to do uh, off. And we need also pain here as well, var pain, like so. And uh, it wouldn't be a const pain. It would be just pain now. Right, all this was ES5, so it wouldn't be a con oh, that's all supposed to be EF5 function. Yeah. Okay, so we've got the close event stored in this one. We've got the pain stored in that one. Okay, and now down below here, we're able to say pain dot off. So if there is a close event, or perhaps better, if there's a pain, if there's a pain made, there's going to be a close event made, and that would turn it off. So that's what we mean by removing uh, custom event listeners. This is a custom event listener. If you don't remove that, it remains in garbage collection. You probably won't notice, but if you make a thousand of them, maybe uh, it would start having a little bit of a memory leak. All right, you still probably won't notice even with a thousand, but we, we know about this because we went through Zim in Zim 10, like one of the versions of Zim 10, and checked all the memory leaks that we could find. We used uh, Google console stuff. We did an explore on that too, I think. And we found that if we left events, we knew if we left these events around, then the objects don't get garbage collected. Okay, so that's what we mean by that. I'm gonna undo all that though. Probably wanted it, didn't you? Hopefully that still works. And then back here, we'll bring this guy back to. All right, let's have a look here. How we're we doing for time? We are at one hour and one minute. I ay 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 ay. Might have made this a two-parter, huh? Okay, that's all still working. You're always welcome, you guys, to take a break. <laughs> you don't have to sit here and watch or listen for the, the whole time. So uh, put it on pause, go get a cookie if, if you want. Okay, come back and maybe we'll start to make sense if your mind is wandering. If my mind's wandering, I'm the one who's still at it. I, I, I would like to get a cookie. I'll take a drink of water. All right, hopefully there's enough tips in here though that it makes it worth your while. Um, we just did <clears throat> ES5. Okay, the rest of the stuff is pretty close. You know what, though? Why don't we just break it into a two-parter? Another thing that happens as we go on for a great length is if we make a mistake, <laughs> something bad happens. We got all these bugs are happening. Then it's sort of like, oh, what do we do? Do we have to record the whole thing again? Uh, I tend not to want to edit these things. I like to just do them almost like they're live and they're out there. So we store it and we pass it along. No editing. Uh, it's easier easier for us really in general to just do it over again. And I'd rather not do over an hour. So if we... <laughs> If my big mistake is rambling on about doing over videos, then <laughs> anyway, uh, why don't we make this two-parter then? We'll take a look at the ES6 because we've also got this full uh, version over here, and that has some really exciting things to talk about that are the Zim V values and the Zim Oct for style. So this gives you up to the basic ES5. Did we finish it all? We almost did. Uh, the one last thing was up there, the getter setter methods, the clone. Okay, yeah, let's just look at the clone and then we'll, we'll um, make it a two-parter. So this dot clone is going to override. Now it, it's not here, it could be, but the only reason we've got this stuff, so if we wanted to add clone, we'd do this, clone, doesn't really matter the order. So now we're overriding the two of them. The only reason we put them in there is if we need to call the super constructor. So the dispose calls the super constructor. The clone does not call the super constructor. It doesn't need the other clone. Um, so that's 
why we don't have to put clone down there. Only if you need to access the super constructor do you need to say which ones you're overriding. Okay. Uh, by the way, in behind extend, half of it, uh, probably three quarters of it, was already made by CreateJS. CreateJS has this process of extending. Uh, this is because ES5 is really tricky to extend classes. It's, you know, it's the thing of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of articles and back and forth and big long posts on, on uh, Stack Overflow about how to extend <laughs> classes in ES5. <laughs> so CreateJS um, took all that learning and stuck it into, you know, probably something like 30 lines of, uh, 20 lines of complex code to make sure that this extend system worked. We took it and made it even easier um, and more powerful. So the Zim extend adds maybe, I don't know, 10 lines of code, but in there it, it provides for ways to do things like this that, that couldn't otherwise be done. All right, now you're gonna see in ES6 that we can bypass that stuff now, uh, which is great, but um, it's really just about as easy doing it this way anyway. So here we are cloning. Uh, how we clone is we make a new house. So we're basically making a new Zim house and passing in the current colors and whatever size we had. However, there's other properties that may happen, like scale and stuff gets applied afterwards. So if somebody scaled the house or rotated it or um, transition or transformation properties, sorry, transformation properties were applied to it, then when we clone it, we want to also clone those. So Zim has in it this thing called clone props. Actually, I guess it's, it looks like it's a method of the container. So that dot clone props is calling the clone props method on the container. And that's made in Zim that will go through and clone all of those transform properties amongst other things. Okay, so we then return that. So when we make a clone, we just return the cloned pr the, this thing with all those clone props. And that basically is how the clone's done. There are some nuances that we'll talk in the full versions though, where if we pass in dynamic parameters, we might want an option to clone exactly how it looked or clone with those dynamic parameters still working so that as the clone will have maybe a random color or something. All right, and that's very common for um, situations like when we tile something, sometimes we want that to be cloned all differently. Sometimes we want an exact clone of the tile and we, do, we don't know. So we have provided uh, a parameter in here called exact and we'll see that when we look at the ES uh, or the full ones. All right, so we looked at clone. We've looked at dispose. You probably, if you make a component, would probably want to include those in there, like so. We do. Uh, all of the Zim ones have those ones as well. We've looked at the getter setter methods. Uh, here we have a method, a custom method. Here we have some custom properties. And here we are calling the super constructor, setting the type. Uh, here we are collecting the parameters, doing the Zim Duo technique, calling the class and the module pattern. Yay, and the docs. So this has been a Zim Explore. I'm Dr. Abstract. I hope, uh, hope you've liked this. Uh, stay tuned for the second um, side of this or the second video. It's all about the ES6 stuff and the full uh, template. I'm Dr. Abstract, have a great day or night. Cheers. <laughs>